this is our third video in our Scrivener tutorial series and today we are going to compile our project and that's pretty much what we're going to do uh, in this video. So hit here compile and uh, make sure you choose novel if that's not pre-selected unless you're doing something else of course um, and then it's going to include all your files if you want to uncheck them you just hit option and you click and check them all option click it checks them all again uh, this checkbox as over here as is it means that whatever formatting you have in that specific document is going to use that formatting you'll probably only want to do that with your title page if you're wondering like where this thing is it's over here front matter manuscript format title page so if you want to change whatever it's here you change it in this document um, combine including documents uh, make sure you select manuscript format again if you're not doing um, something different um, and uh, I like to compile it for RTF and then I convert it later to doc if I need to and that's pretty much covers this um, first tab um, and then this I don't mess around this but I wanted to understand what it is uh, basically saying that if you have two scenes one after the other is going to separate them using this thing over here uh, and this is pretty much the standard so I do have no reasons to change this and like this is the folder for separation that is the separation between the chapters so it's a page break makes a lot of sense uh, and so on and so forth by any reason you want to change this then you come here uh, the formatting well you possibly you may want to change this depending on what you're doing so it highlights what it's referring to so level one is those two over here uh, your chapters in this case so you can decide to put the title or not so if you have for instance chapter one the red wedding and you wanted to show the red wedding so you're going to put the title but in this case uh, and the title is what whatever you write over here by the way so in my in my case i don't want it to show because i don't want it to be like chapter one chapter one you know so in this case i'm gonna uncheck this over here and this is if you want to show the text in that document or not. I guess it would only make sense for you to check this checkbox for a folder that is a chapter. If you have like quotes, you know, from someone famous for a chapter begins, if that's the case, you might want to check this checkbox. That's not our case. This is, is just for you to configure like what kind of documents are going to have uh, the title shown and what kind of document are going to have the text shown. You make conscious decisions here according to the project you're currently working on. Uh, title adjustments, again, that's not something I mess with. Uh, you can add prefixes and suffixes. I mean, I never found this uh, relevant, but anyway, it's here. Layout, again, I'm happy with the choices here. I never saw any reason to change anything here. Transformations, I do change things here. So it does a couple of conversions and this comes uh, pre-checked and I don't like any of this. It's basically like if you have quotes and instead of being hooky, it's gonna make them straight. Why would I want them straight? I like them looking like a hook. Uh, convert and dashes to double iPhones. No reason for that. Convert ellipses to triple periods. I mean, that might be a good idea because sometimes when you convert to word, um, sometimes you have problems, uh, so you might want to make it a more clean format and this would make it cleaner. Uh, but mm, uh, I prefer to leave it as it is. Anyway, and this one I honestly don't understand. Like why would you want to convert italics to underlines? This is an honest question. If you know why it would be a good idea to convert your italics to underlines, Please put that in the comment section below because I honestly want to know. I bet there is a reason, otherwise the option wouldn't be here. But I don't like it and I uncheck this. Replacements. Again, something that I don't use. I suppose, I don't know, if you have curse words and you want, you know, to replace them with something else. I never used this. I never needed it. Um, this is actually because when it compiles your file, it's going to put in the top 
of your title page the word count. And this is to define like what documents it's gonna consider and what documents it's not gonna consider. So I pretty much agree with um, what comes here, uh, which says basically that it's only gonna consider the main text, not the notes, the synopsis, uh, comments, whatever. Um, it's just what's actually in the texts, you know, in the text. I agree with the choices here, I don't change this. Tables, I don't use tables, so I don't know. Uh, comments and footnotes, uh, the important thing for me over here is that this to come checked, which basically is that it doesn't put the comments. But if by any reason you want to have the comments in your final documents, I suppose you would uncheck the, this over here. Um, page settings, this is an interesting one. Normally you, you don't need to mess around this too much because this is the industry standard, one inch margins all around and all that. But you might want to change, for instance, the, the header. Um, it comes with the surname and the abbreviated project title. And you're wondering, like, what this comes from? Like, what is this? So I'm going to show you. This is metadata. So you come here to meta, metadata settings and um, project properties. So you can change the winner. Jesus project um, and I can call my abbreviated title Scrivener, I don't know, my full name, my surname, my forename. So you see and it shows you this in the front of it. So this is what I want for instance. I want to use my full name, not my surname. So what I do when I come over here, oh and this is very important. If you do what I just did, that I canceled and then I hit compile again, everything that I that I selected, for instance, I select that I didn't want the title over here, you have to go through it again when you do this the first time. Uh, it's just gonna put the default options again, like for instance, the transformations. Remember that I unchecked all of this. Just so you know, like if you hit cancel, it's gonna lose whatever uh, configurations you put here, but it didn't change a lot of things. So, but anyway, page settings. So I don't want the surname. I want the full name. So I just changed this here. That's pretty much it when it comes to page settings. And quick form to write. I do use this. I put it um, Times New Roman, um, which is the industry standard, and I put it RTF again. <laughs> because I lost my configuration, so let's make sure everything is right. Yes, so let's compile. I'm going to call this Scrivener Project, yes, sounds like a good name. And then it's going to put it over here. And I'm going to open it with Word. And as you can see, uh, it has the word count here uh, on the top and if you want to change what shows um, what's being shown in here um, you change this document over here okay uh, and see look how pretty it is um, you have the header with my full name um, you have um, let's see we can see a scene break somewhere you have a scene break over here and you can see when I have a new chapter, it um, it, it has a page break in the same way with computer. So anyway, it works really well. You see, you have your document ready to go and you don't need to worry about formatting. You just write your novel and then you compile it and then it's done. Next video, we're gonna talk about some interesting features, things that I use a lot and not many people use, but I find quite helpful, like the snapshots. I see you guys next time. If you like this video, please hit the like button here below. Please subscribe, put your comments in the comment section below. Please give me suggestions for future videos. I would really appreciate it if you guys did that. I see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. Yeah.